G'day guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Wildcard. Thank you for watching my content and giving me the pleasure and the privilege to talk about the greatest game in the world, rugby. And uh, yeah, last week in rugby, the uh, further fallouts has come out with regards to Eddie Jones' future uh, after being sacked by the RFU following a pretty lackluster performance in the November test uh, series. So yeah, uh, a lot of media still focusing on Eddie Jones. Uh, one of the big, big boys, one of the big boys club, uh, King Rassi Erasmus has come out and uh, revealed his thoughts. He put out a tweet basically saying that he's a man who has rugby in his heart and uh, showed a uh, screenshot of Eddie Jones calling him. Uh, so basically he was banned last year before, just before the match against England in 2021, you know, following the video that came out with regards his criticism towards Nick Barry. So yeah, uh, Eddie Jones tried to call him to have a chat with how he's coping with the ban. But yeah, uh, seeing two missed calls by Eddie Jones in your phone is a <laughs> pretty scary prospect, right? Uh, so yeah, Eddie Jones, you know, tried to call him. Razzie gave him a bit of, bit of reply, but yeah, you know, he, uh, he is basically, you know, showing a lot of respect and high praise for, for Eddie Jones. Yeah, that's Razzie's stance. Uh, on the other hand, Sir Clive Woodward, Eddie Jones's best friend, uh, has pretty, pretty, you know, harsh words, again, as always, that he was saying about Eddie Jones. So in his articles this week, um, he kind of come out and uh, yeah, further just kicked Eddie Jones a bit more further down, uh, down the down the ditch after Eddie Jones lost his job. So yeah, um, we will basically say um, that Eddie is a much better coach. Um, yeah, basically saying that Eddie is a shadow of the, the guy that he played, he, he, you know, performed against in 2003. Um, that's not really a fair comparison because Eddie Jones actually has developed a lot since 2003. It's like almost two decades now since he last competed against Eddie Jones. So yeah, um, I do feel like it's probably just him, you know, talking a bit of a chat. Uh, and he's... His reasoning, uh, Woodward's reasoning for Eddie Jones' firing is that, that Eddie Jones is focusing too far forward to the World Cup and not actually focusing on the game that is at hand. Uh, essentially saying that Eddie Jones has a... The, the grand strategy that Eddie Jones has is not what you're supposed to do uh, in, in international test rugby, even though that's kind of like what he did in 2003. He had a long-term plan for England rugby. Uh, bringing in a lot of specialist coaches and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, he kind of like criticized Eddie Jones for that, for uh, too long-term focus, essentially. And that's something that really, after he's, you know, lost the World Cup in 2019, uh, his uh, woodwork thinks that Eddie Jones has been just thinking about and preparing for 2023 and really ne neglecting the games that it's kind of like in between the two World Cups. Uh, on the other hand, you know, Matt Guido, one of the former Australian fly halves, one of the best Australian players kind of like ever, uh, who also played under Eddie Jones in 2003 Rugby World Cup as a youngster. So yeah, he kind of come out and said, um, yeah, the, the woodwork has been silly. You know, the, the Eddie Jones is planning that takes the team to the World Cup. Um, the long-term strategic planning that Eddie Jones brings has shown a lot of results. And essentially, yeah, he thinks it's a big mistake. For, for England to fire him, uh, kind of like, you know, disagreeing with Woodward's assessment. Well, you know, to be fair, there is like a culture in England at the moment. Uh, it's that kind of self-sabotage, self, you know, yeah, like, like a lot of jealousy amongst former players and current players, former coaches and current coaches. Uh, and, you know, Woodward, in my, th th you know, it has been documented that it's the case. And Woodward kind of, exemplifies that um that you know internal jealousy between themselves uh in england rugby a lot uh with some of the comments that he's made throughout the years towards Eddie jones whether it's win whether they win or lose he always has something negative to say about Eddie jones and uh, yeah uh once again he's just came out made another pretty pretty you know you know um 
I will say, yeah, pretty um, toxic in a sense. Uh, comments about Eddie Jones again. Uh, so with regards to some of the players, people that actually works with the Jones, they don't actually feel like the firing was warranted. Uh, Owen Farrell has come out and st said it pretty positively about Eddie Jones. I did find it unbelievably disappointing. Um, one of the things that Owen Farrell has pretty much said is that you know he's you know he's learned a lot from Eddie Jones and he he really you know didn't think that Eddie Jones. Uh, the losing all the test matches in November was Eddie Jones full, fully to blame. And uh, yeah, and he, he really felt really was uh, really disappointed and he was very thankful to have been worked with Eddie Jones in the past. We probably, yeah, you know, because Owen Farrell's career kind of started with Eddie Jones, uh, basically started his first international test started with him replacing his dad uh, at Saracens, I think it was. But yeah, but that was under the, coaching was the saracens or which one was it but yeah i was basically uh under the coaching of eddie under the watch vice of eddie jones so he had a lot his, his career has a lot to thank um from eddie jones and he kind of said a lot of that um in this kind of interview um with that being said uh eddie jones has been revealed that he's currently got a little side gig that's already lined up for him uh, at the moment so he will be going to castro's olympic as a uh, consultant and this has been revealed by the head coach uh pierre henry bronken um basically yeah he's already confirmed to have a little bit of um uh interim interim uh job at uh castrus um in the top 14 so yeah not too worried about eddie jones not getting um getting much work after that uh also there's been a lot of talks about eddie jones potentially joining the wallabies so eddie jones is currently uh, signed to go to America to work for the Eagles starting after the Rugby World Cup in 2023. So he has about a year gap, a nine month gap before he actually starts that job um, for the next, he will be in America for eight years, all the way taking America into the uh, Rugby World Cup, their home Rugby World Cup in 20, what, 20, uh, what is it, 2031? So he will be overseeing uh, America in eight years. But before he starts, there's, you know, talks from um, from Australia that he could potentially, yeah, come into, come back to Australia. Um, they are talking to him and uh, they will be looking at potentially having him maybe as a consultant under Dave Rennie, who will still be the head coach. So this has been reviewed by the Australian newspaper, the Sydney Morning Herald. And uh, yeah, and uh, even, yeah, so yeah, they're pretty confident that he will be with the Wallabies at some point. So yeah. Uh, it was interesting to see Eddie Jones come back and uh, help the Wallabies again. Um, so yeah, obviously um, there was some controversial referee uh, referee decision decisions at the rugby, not rugby, at the soccer World Cup, the football World Cup. Uh, obviously England was eliminated. <laughs> uh, football is not coming home, unfortunately, for the English fans. Uh, England was eliminated by France, and there was a lot of controversy out of that game. I watched this game in the mornings and yeah there was one point where harry uh what's some harry kang was blatantly pushed over and he fell in the box and that should have been a penalty um i thought it was a penalty but the rule in in um in soccer is that if the infringement happened outside the box the tmo cannot review it like they cannot make a decision so because it was like on the edge of the box and kang kind of like fell into the box uh the TMO had a look at it, even though it was a clear penalty, the TMO, TMO could not essentially um, act upon it. And a lot of people came out and basically said that the referee should have stepped in and issued a penalty uh, outside the box, a free kick outside the box, regardless of um, or for the, the, whether or not the TMO can make a decision or not. So a lot of people was not happy about that, felt like England should have had another penalty. And uh, yeah, um, one of the biggest... Uh, football pundit Gary Neville. Um, even I, 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 even I've seen him a lot on on TV. Um, he's like, he's you know, his opinions about football is pretty um, highly regarded. I would say in 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 England, he basically came out and said that the referee was pretty poor, and uh, and this has you know a lot of trickle effect 
uh, on a lot of reactions by, 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 by people around the world. Um, one of the reactions was from rugby side. So this guy, Christopher Riley, basically said that, hey, mate, you know, that's, that's really damaging to not just referees in soccer, but in other sports as well. And as a referee himself, he kind of felt like that was, you know, yeah, he did a Rassi. Uh, Gary Neville did a Rassi and, um, you know, um, the rugby referees are not really happy about it. Still, I, I feel like, you know, it's, yeah, probably just need to be a thicker skin in the modern days when it comes to social media. You know, it's, it's like one of the things uh, like that Barbra Streisand effect. The more you tell people not to, to, to talk about something, the more you're going to incite people to talk about it. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, I... I I just think the referees need to have a bit of thicker skin, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, Gary Neville said ref is a joke. And uh, yeah, this was uh, felt in the rugby referees. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, quite interesting that, that uh, you know, um, the Northerners cry about referees um, all the time, even in other sports. So anyway, the, the next news, uh, Gareth Anscombe, Gareth Anscombe, who's been quite an injured, who's currently injured, um, following a game, his performance against Australia, uh, he's been sought to be lining up with the French side. Um, that is a um, Pau. I don't know how to say that, but he's uh, currently, yeah, um, he's currently being pursued by uh, by the top fourteen French side. Uh, what the reasoning he's he's being targeted is that the Wales, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Rugby Union, uh, WRU, uh, Wales Rugby Union, basically have not guaranteed um, a agreement with the players. So basically, they yeah, there has been a, like a bit of a uh, exodus at the moment in Wales rugby. Uh, so with Will Rollins leaving already last week to um, to um, to Racing ninety two, basically there's a lot of the players are looking elsewhere because of the fact that the Welsh Rugby Union have not agreed on a budget framework that the clubs will be going forward with their players. And there was literally reports last week that came out that some players are not able to get loans, like house loans, because there's no guarantee of their contracts at the moment. And, and after the players union pressured further for action for uh, by Wales Rugby Union, they came out verbally, yeah, agreed on a budget framework that allows... Um, that 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 are uh, yeah that that kind of you know mumbles over the details on what the players are going to be given and you know still leaving basically the players in limbo's a lot and that is the reason you know Anscombe and a lot of these top players uh, is allowed to look for and other options in other parts of uh, the greener pastures um, yeah uh, overseas uh, so another guy who's found a player overseas spot overseas Peter Gas so a cooler. Uh, he's been confirmed to sign with Clermont. He had been debuted for the All Blacks for two games, so he's unfortunately not available to be selected by Fiji. There was a lot. He had been played two games uh, against for the All Blacks against the Irish in July, and then he just basically never been selected again. Uh, there was a lot of talk off the field of speculations of why he was not selected, but it is reported in this article by Rugby Pass that um, there were some off-field misbehaviors contributed to um, him not being selected at all to the All Blacks 8 or the B team. Yeah, and also, obviously, he fell out of fever because Plumtree was um, left as a forwards coach. But yeah, there was potential, there was uh, off-field misbehaviors contributed to him not being selected to the All Blacks. Um, yeah, there you go. What off-field misbehaviors, uh, we don't know. But that is the um, the rumor, the rumor in the air. But regardless, he will be going to greener pastures. We probably we will be making more money in France anyway. So good for him. And uh, and as a result, for two, he's not able to play for Fiji um, for three years after after. So he won't be playing for Fiji if he wish to uh, until at least the Rugby World Cup in Australia, which is two thousand and. Uh, what is it? 27. So, yeah. Uh, next up, the Players Rugby Players Association is looking for a new general secretary. Um, top five players, people that's been selected. Mike Brown uh, is a former English player. Uh, Chris, Christian Day. Uh, Matt Garvey. I don't really know these two. 
uh, Mark Lambert, and finally, Jamie Roberts. Uh, is, he, is this still in Australia? I'm pretty sure his daughters are like Australian, basically. He, he has like, one of his daughters was born in Australia. So yeah, Jamie Roberts, uh, never be forgiven for stealing the Lions tour from Australia. Uh, he will be potentially lining up to be um to be a mo to be a um yeah a war task player to be a um a general secretary for players associ rugby players association. Uh, as we may talked about, Eddie Jones will be taking over with Warren Gatlin actually the US A team in two thousand and twenty three. As of now, Gary Gold, the current head coach, has been fired uh, by the uh, USA Eagles after failing to qualify to the Rugby World Cup. They missed out qualifications very close. Um, for, yeah, a couple times they, uh, I think, they lost to Chile um, in their initial regional qualifier in a pretty close contest, and then yeah, they lost. Um, they basically lost on points to Portugal. Um, was it Portugal? Yeah, to Portugal. Uh, in the la in in the in the in the in the last of basically you know the final um, qualifying match in Dubai, uh, and basically they lost on cumulative points being scored because uh, the the game against Portugal the second game was actually a draw uh, but because it was a draw Portugal wins on overall points differential so yeah uh, US Eagles was really disappointing and the um, coach Gary Gold uh, has left the team um, yeah so obviously um, some more soccer drama has been spilled over into rugby uh, obviously there was a bit of a, a lot of like taunting and a bit of argy bargy in the Argentina versus the Netherlands game, the Dutch, uh, the Dutch. So the, the um, yes, the Dutch. Um, so the so obviously there were some pictures that have been shown Argentinians taunting um, the the Dutch after the match. And Rugby Planet sent out a tweet just saying like this wouldn't happen in rugby. Quite quite stupid statement actually. A lot of people came out and basically slammed them. Uh, the best one of all of these examples of Ajibaji in rugby is obviously the greatest taunt in the history of rugby, and and um, Squeak Rugby will be the one to pick that up. Um, let's just quick a sneaky look here. So uh, this is. If you can't really hear what he actually said, but George Gregan famously, you can see from his uh, lips, basically he said to uh, Baron Callagher, this was in Rugby World Cup in 2003, where they knocked out the All Blacks in the quarterfinals. We knocked out the All Blacks in quarterfinals. And, uh, well, no, semifinals. No, we knocked out the All Blacks in semifinals. And Gregan taunted. Uh, Byron Callagher saying four more years, mate. This was uh, the best haunt in the history of rugby. And uh, yeah, very proud of George Gregan for saying that to Byron Callagher. But yeah, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, it's quite stupid for playing the rugby to come out and say that this doesn't happen in rugby when it clearly does. Uh, a bit of a more kind of like red flags going on with New Zealand rugby at the moment. They lost... To, uh, they lost to France in the sevens uh, game in Cape Town. So yeah, um, that's uh, I mean the, the 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 All Blacks sevens team has not been doing very well, and uh, losing to Spain is a yeah big big issues in New Zealand rugby at the moment. Uh, Courtney Laws has returned to um, to the. Uh, Heineken's Championship, the European Championship, uh, after two months off um, in a, what do you call it, HIA? Uh, yeah, so he had HIA issue for for two months, uh, concussion for two months, uh, which left him not able to play in the November International Test. Uh, he was actually Eddie Jones' captain as well for England. So yeah, uh, one of the Big, 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 you know, missing piece of the puzzle for the England team for Eddie Jones uh, in the November test. And uh, yeah, he's finally returned. Um, good to see that he's back in uh, in health. Uh, and also, obviously, uh, the European Cup is uh, currently includes... It's, this is the first season that includes the South African teams. So uh, the... Yeah, basically, there were three teams from South Africa that qualified for the European Cup uh, from last year's URC. And then with the remainder teams, I think the Cheetahs and um, I think one more, I think it was another team 
uh, from the, from the South Africa that was going into the like the the, the so there's the Champions League and then there's the Challengers Cup. They were going into the Challengers Cup. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people are not happy about South Africans being included um, because there is uh, a lot of the, the French clubs believe that uh, this is a logistic issue with regard to the safety and of way fixtures. Um, basically talking about they were concerned about you know safety by for playing in South Africa and logistic for playing in South Africa. Um, yeah, they don't think it's safe for their players to be traveling to South Africa for these games. Uh, and also, a lot of people, including Anton Dupont, feels that the European Cup should be staying to its roots, playing by European teams, and that does not include South Africa. So a bit of a, um, yeah, bit of a, the, you know, the, the yeah, bit of the spirit of the European Cup is going out a window. Uh, I mean, it's technically the Heineken's Cup. It's, it hasn't been called the European Cup for, you know, the, 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 yeah, it's not really... It's 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 the European Cup, but it's you know you sold out to sponsorship, so it doesn't actually say European Cup. It's called the Heineken's Champions um, Champions Cup or something. So yeah, it's yeah. So I mean, the spirit of European Cup has gone ever since you sold the name anyway. So it doesn't really matter to me. And just having the South Africans there, just uh, uh, in my opinion, spices up the um, the the game a little bit and makes it a bit more exciting. But yeah, it is a bit difficult for for the teams now because they have to travel. Um, travel to the South Africa and play in summer, essentially, which is uh, a bit of a... Oh, yeah, the Lions, sorry. The uh, the Cats, the Cheetahs and the Cats are in the, the Challengers Cup uh, with Bulls, um, Bulls Stormers and... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Bulls Stormers and Sharks? Where's the Sharks? Uh, yeah, and Sharks in the uh, Champions Cup, which is the like the European... The, 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 a, the a cup right um so yeah that's the talk set um so Adi Savir has been given the player of the year by the New Zealanders after missing out uh by players of the year or even nom even nominated for player of the year in uh in the world rugby yeah it was pretty surprising that he was um not not even mentioned in the world rugby 15 uh team of the years now not only that he wasn't nominated for any awards uh despite that he's clearly the best number eight in the world and the best player in New Zealand rugby again and again and again here single-handedly um, turn games around single-handedly uh, for the All Blacks and for his club team at the Hurricanes so yeah um, but he finally gets his deserved recognition by the New Zealand locals as player of the year so uh, yeah obviously with Scott Robinson um, there was a lot of talk about him potentially taking over England uh, there was also a lot of talk of him potentially taking over the All Blacks and currently both of these doors are like kind of like close to him at least for the meantime um, the Crusader CEO had to come out and you know quell the rumors and settle everything down and tell everyone that he's focused uh, on the current upcoming Crusader season to keep everybody uh, a check and uh, yeah so um, essentially the CEO has to come out and make some statements about um, his ambitions of overseas would not be conflicting with um, with his current job at the All Blacks, and he will be focused uh, yada 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 to deliver results for the fans. And uh, finally, so there was uh, a player called Levy Davis playing in f uh, France. Uh, sorry, um, where is where is he? Um, was he playing France or Barcelona? Oh yeah, no. Uh, he was a former bath winger, and he's been found missing for um, for a month now. And uh, last time he was spotted was in Barcelona, and uh, yeah. So this um his family has put out eleven thousand pounds reward to find him. Um, yeah, quite concerning for his family. He does have mental health issues, so yeah. Uh, hopefully, he will be found to be okay. Uh, and finally, like I mentioned, the Champions Cup. Basically, the Heineken's uh, Cup, the opening round has been has concluded. Uh, some of the big results is that Sharks beaten the Harlequins, which is a pretty big one. Harlequins is like one of the top teams in, in England. Um, Stormers fell to Clermont. The Bulls beat uh, Lions. And uh, the, uh, not the Sales Sharks, the, um, what was it? Oh, this, is, this doesn't include the, the B side. But yeah, so uh, the South Africans are basically... Um, 
two wins and one loss overall. Uh, not too bad, I guess. But yeah, that's the first round um, of the uh, European Rugby Champions Cup. And uh, with that being said, that's the news for this week. Let me know your thoughts on any of the articles. And uh, thanks for watching. As always, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we'll be doing Six Nations previews. We'll put out some content before Christmas. And uh, yeah, keep stay tuned, stay subscribed, and stay safe. Have a good weekend, guys. I'll see you guys um, next week. Cheers.